Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. Dear Pastor, what is the relationship between justification and Easter? What do you think about the article by Tom Hart on the subject? Well, uh, the third article of the Apology to the Augsburg Confession clearly confesses the relationship between Easter and our justification. It says, Christ suffered and died to reconcile the Father to us, and that he was raised again to reign and to justify and sanctify believers. Simply put, Christ is raised to justify those who believe in him. Now, that is not the way that modern Lutheranism understands the relationship between Easter and justification. The modern position is best summarized by Francis Pieper. Uh, Christian Dogmatics, Volume 2, page 231, he writes, Now then, if the Father raised Christ from the dead, he, by this glorious resurrection act, declared that all the sins of the world are fully expiated or atoned for, and that all mankind is now declared or regarded as righteous before his divine tribunal. This gracious reconciliation and justification is clearly taught in Romans 4.25, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. So according to Pieper, the Father declared two different things at Christ's resurrection from the dead. The first is that the sins of the world are fully expiated, meaning that God accepts Christ's sacrifice for the sins of the world. The second is that all mankind is now regarded as righteous before his divine tribunal, meaning that the atonement of Christ is now simultaneously applied to all mankind, and so that every person is declared righteous, every person has their sins forgiven. Pieper got this reading of Romans 4.25 from his teacher, C.F.W. Walther. Interestingly enough, uh, Pieper remarks later on, uh, page 541, that uh, the theological textbook that Walther used didn't include the teaching of universal objective justification, so Walther added it by adding quotations so that it would teach, quote, a universal justification fully accomplished, which is the object of justifying faith. Among the theological progeny of Walther and Pieper, this reading of Romans 4.25 continues down to this very day. Paul's words, that Christ was raised again for our justification, are taken to mean raised again to show that the entire world is justified. Now, as we've already said, that's not how the apology of the Augsburg Confession understands this relationship. Johann Gerhard, who is the arch theologian of the Lutheran Church, deals comprehensively with Romans 4.25 uh, in his annotations on Romans 1-6, through 6, which you can get and should get from Repristination Press. Uh, and he even asked the question, in what sense and respect, then, is our justification, which consists of the remission of sins, attributed to the resurrection of Christ? And then he goes on to list three ways in which our justification is attributed to Christ's resurrection. He writes, uh, It should be understood in this way. First, with respect to the manifestation, demonstration, and confirmation, because the resurrection of Christ is the clear testimony that full satisfaction has been made for our sins and that perfect righteousness has been procured. The, right, uh, the, excuse me, the resurrection then is a testimony that Christ has made full satisfaction for our sins and that he's earned a perfect righteousness for the world. In this, Pieper and Gerhard agree. But he goes on to write. Second, with respect to the application. If Christ had remained in death, he would not be the conqueror of death, nor could he apply to us the righteousness that was obtained at such a high price. But since he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, he thus also offers to the world, through the word of the gospel, the benefits obtained by his suffering and death, applies them to believers, and in this way justifies them, in order that we might be justified and that sin might be effectively remitted to us, it was necessary for the suffering of Christ to be applied to us through a living faith. Christ arose, therefore, for the sake of our righteousness, that is, so that our faith might be confirmed, and in this we might be effectively justified. Now, this is very different from how Pieper interprets this verse. Christ lives so that he can offer the benefits obtained at the cross to the world through the gospel and the sacraments, so that he might apply them, quote, to believers and in this way justify them, end quote. He applies the benefits he earned through a living faith, he says. Justification for Gerhard is the uh, final cause or the purpose of Christ's resurrection. He rises so that he might apply the benefits earned to those who believe in him, as Lutherans confess in the third article of the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. Gerhard goes on. Uh, he goes on to state that the resurrection is attributed to our justification, third, with respect to the actual application from sin. 
Yeah, so Christ uh, was condemned for our sins in his flesh. The father, uh, Gerhard writes, withdrew, his, uh, withdrew from sin, excuse me, its legal right against believers so that it cannot condemn them any longer. So by raising Christ, the father, quote, absolved him from our sins that were imputed to him and consequently absolves us in him so that in this way, the resurrection of Christ may be both the cause and the pledge and the complement of our justification. Since sin had been imputed to Christ and he was condemned for all sin, sin has lost its legal right, Gerhard says, against believers, not against the entire world. By calling Christ's resurrection a complement to our justification, he's teaching that we couldn't have been justified without the resurrection. It was a necessary component of that. Third, that Christ was absolved for our sins, which had been imputed to him, God absolves us in him. That is, through faith in Christ. Now, modern proponents of Walther and Pieper's Easter absolution then latch on to this passage of Gerhard and say, look, see, God has absolved us in him. And they assume then a universal declaration of forgiveness. But the word absolve it in Latin here can be translated it's either perfect or present tense. The present tense, absolves, fits much better with everything that Gerhard's been saying up to this point uh, about uh, that people are justified when they believe the gospel. It's also important to note then that Gerhard has continually and uh, throughout his entire chapter explained the us who are justified as believers, not the entire world. The point of all of this is that nowhere in his annotations on Romans um, or his, uh, in his other works that he dealt with justification, does he read Romans 4.25 as Walther and Pieper did? Uh, Gerhard reads, raised for our justification, as expressing the purpose of Christ's resurrection, not the result uh, of which then it was uh, spoken over all mankind. Instead, Gerhard continually speaks of the benefits earned by Christ, which are then applied to sinners by faith. Gerhard only knew of a justification by faith. He never taught a general justification of all mankind as Walther and Pieper did. We can also note that uh, Abraham Kalov, whom Pieper quotes as being favorable to objective justification, uh, Kalov quoted Gerhard on Romans 4.25 approvingly. So what Walther and Pieper ultimately did was they took a phrase out of scripture, they took it out of context and used it to defend their predetermined doctrine that the resurrection of Christ is the absolution of the world. This obviously runs contrary to Gerhard's exegesis of the verse, and even worse, it contradicts the plain and clear words of the apology. So that's the relationship between justification and Easter. Now, we'll spend just a minute or two on this Tom Hart essay, um, because we don't want to get too far into it, but I'll give you kind of two initial criticisms of Hart. Uh, Hart bases his entire paper on a faulty premise. Uh, he believes that Luther taught a mystical justification that was simultaneous with Christ's resurrection. And he bases this premise on a 1543 thesis of Luther's, which Hart translates as, his resurrection from the dead is our justification by faith alone. But that thesis is more accurately translated by uh, as this, his resurrection from the dead is, or logically implies, that the justifying of us is by faith alone. So Luther didn't teach a general resurrection, or that the resurrection was uh, our justification, a general justification, excuse me, uh, that, that his resurrection is our absolution or justification. He taught, as Gerhard would have, uh, that the resurrection's purpose was so that he could justify believers by faith. Hart also uh, misreads objective justification back into the Wittenberg faculty during the Samuel Huber debate. Um, he assumes that the Wittenberg faculty agreed with Huber's assertion that there was a general justification. In fact, Hart quotes part of the faculty's explanation, which condemns Huber's general justification, but Hart reads it as if they agree with him that there is a general justification. Uh, so he, he reads it against the, clear, uh, against the clear words of their faculty writing, uh, when in fact that very same faculty said about general justification that in all the published writings and in all of scripture, there is nothing but eternal silence about a general justification. So like countless other modern Lutheran scholars, Hart has read general justification back into the words of Luther and others, claiming that they clearly taught an objective justification, when in reality they only confessed one justification of a sinner. The sinners are justified by faith alone in Christ. Thanks for the question. We'll catch you next time on ATP.